Where are we going? Dem, 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 north. Welcome to Deacons and Dragons. Therapeutic benefit in role playing games. Welcome to Deacons and Dragons. Oh, yeah, baby. Your presence quested in exchange for treasures. Dem, dem, red, red, red. Are we talking one treasure each? And count that high. Welcome to Deacons and Dragons. On our last episode of Cartoon Action Hour, we wrapped up Billy Barbaduke and the Magic Ghoul Bus, and now we are on to the final cartoon, Deej, parentheses, out of time. A funky fresh beat begins with blue energy sucking in, pulling Ripa, Gizmo, Casanova, Cameron Steele, and Gobby Jack from their respective planes across space. We hear echoes of signature lines like, Rip a nose, hard ass steel, and I'd rather not be here right now. The darkness shifts to a room with a legion of doom-like uh, appearance of supervillains around a table with Nelson Nelson Sr. in the center as a hologram. They laugh with scheming fingers before we see Casanova at the center of the screen facing the viewer with his arms crossed and the other four heroes appear behind him one at a time. All right. So this cartoon is an amalgamation. The series name, Deej, out of time. Uh, the tagline is, we'd rather not be here right now. And I'll point out that the uh, heroic playset is called Brigadoon's Brigade's Brig. And that's after the, the name Brigadoon's Brigade, which is the collected, uh, uh, collection of characters that we have here. So after deciphering the mathematical equation for using maple syrup as jet fuel, Nelson Nelson Sr. accidentally blew open a hole in the multiverse. Characters from all across each time are dragged into an alternate Earth that's been rocked by a major life-ending event. Now, several mob bosses vie for control of a wasteland. The genre is post-apocalypse. The tech level is post-apocalypse. Uh, the series' goal is to figure out how they got to this universe and to get home. The antagonist is the Legion of Mob Bosses, and the setting is Earth. Uh, our star power is three, our tier is human, and for dials, we have a seriousness of two, a realism of one, again, one being least, three being most, uh, a violence of two, and a continuity of three, as the characters are constantly trying to find ways back to their respective universes. Uh, so let's go around and introduce, or reintroduce, as I should say, uh, our characters here. As always, we'll go alphabetically. And uh, so, oh, sorry, not your Anna scale. Uh, so Cameron Steele uh, is going to be going first. So I believe Cameron Steele needs no introduction. Cameron Steele is a 20-something one percenter who <laughs> hails from Hampton, New Hampshire. Um, he is a, uh, a hardcore wrestler. In the past, he has been known to, um, to have been under certain substances while wrestling um, and honestly just aiming to hurt people. The stadium kind of goes black and then the lights close to the entrance just start kind of flashing blue and red as um, police sirens start blaring through the um, the speakers. Um, and then you just hear dispatch being like, you know, in pursuit of, um, in, 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 in pursuit of, of suspect. Um, and then all of a sudden Andrew WK is ready to die starts playing, playing as Cameron Steele runs out of the backstage um, with handcuffs, wearing nothing but a little speedo um, and an ankle bracelet. Um, Cameron Steele is probably, you know, wearing his, uh, actually, you know, probably like the, the John Cena-esque kind of like cargo shorts, um, but like polo shirts, except they're like layered, so he's like three pop collars going right now. Um, slung over his shoulder is this massive pipe with just like spikes and random metal bits and shivs just kind of welded at the end of it at just random angles um, as he's walking, you know, along the side of his compadre, his, uh, his compatriots. Nice. And Cameron Steele, of course, is from our wrestling episode. Yes. The Worldwide Wrestling RPG. That's the one. Uh, that would take us to... Uh, Gizmo. Gizmo is 
a small uh, pug-like dog that is kind of nervous in disposition, uh, wearing a rogue's cloak, uh, and kind of shifty. Gizmo's background is that uh, they came from uh, a small town where, because of Gizmo's gullibility, he was drawn into uh, sort of criminal enterprises um, unwillingly and unknowingly in some cases. Uh, he renounced his life of crime and then set off to become a great adventurer. Gizmo, of course, being from Hugmire. That brings us to Gobby Jack. Gobby Jack, Gobby Jack being from Goblinville. Uh, Gobby Jack is an orphan who was raised in the Goblin village of Dumpsterk. He fed himself and made some scratch, which was the currency in Goblinville, as a taste tester for the lethal chef known as Stump. My, uh, his childhood friend Sneef made a potion that perpetually grows hair. That is why Gobby Jack has a beautiful beard. Beautiful beard. He's the only goblin around with a beautiful beard. Um, he poked his own eye out with a horn. He is the ho- he's the horn blower of the Goblin Build group. Um, and so he poked his eye out one day, uh, and he dreams of owning his own horn smith shop, where he builds his own sh- horns and sells them, and, and the, the greatest horns in the land. Um, and yeah, Gobby Jack, uh, he's, like I said, giant beard. He's got this crazy, like, mane of hair as well that kind of, like, just flows into the beard. It's, just, it's almost like this crazy, like, um, almost like circular mane of hair, it's just kind of, like, around his face. Um, really ratty, uh, tattered, like, uh, clothes, uh, cloth clothes. Probably looks like he's owned them for his entire life and they've never been washed. Um, yeah, Gobby Jack. That's Gobby Jack. All right. And, and finally, from uh, Ghost Ops and our intros, Ripper Johnson. Hey everyone, the Ripper's back. So happy to be in this post-apocalyptic world after vanquishing cereal. I'm gonna take out those people too. Ripper knows, Ripper always knows. (laughs) Yes, and the leader of this group as one who has wandered uh, far from his home or has gotten lost from his home and been perpetually wandering trying to find his way home across dimensions casanova brigadoon i would rather not be here right now is none other than casanova brigadoon you remember from our clink gameplay he is a spanish priest uh who obtained uh one of the oni swords uh which is empowered by fire so he basically has this magic lava sword that will just cut right through stone like it's butter and just because of him giving up everything to wander away through the woods and then showing up somehow in Project Biomotus and then somehow again in Ripe. Uh, we know that he's kind of a planeswalker trying to find his way home. So uh, the group's official title is uh, Brigadoon's Brigade. All right. So this is the season premiere of DJ at a Time where the players crash into a desert wasteland in various places and positions within the same general area. Um, He has been showing up in other stuff. Uh, He made a cameo in in Project Biomotus uh, when they went into a forest area and they heard this like loud stomping and stuff. And then he started like running through the forest completely naked. Like, I'd rather not be here right now. And then we got him Uh, killed. (laughs) Yeah, we got him killed there. Uh, And then when we played Wright earlier, uh, sorry. Uh, so the uh, the characters, again, crashing into this desert wasteland. Uh, while they're coming in hot like meteors, we see a skyscraper building that somehow survived whatever happened here. And we zoom to the top floor where a man with dark hair and a mustache lies in a bath filled with golden coins. And he's being showered by a goon with a, a bubble wand. Uh, so at this point, you can click. Uh, oh, wait a minute. They all say spoiler. Um, <laughs> It would be the second one, Uh, the second spoiler down. You can click on that and uh, figure out that that is, in fact, Don Giuseppe Alamancha. Uh, So (laughs) we'll get to that later. His eyes suddenly open with intensity uh, while he's being uh, showered with bubble wands and these medias are crashing. In another uh, area, a fortified fast food restaurant with an ominous golden arch A small blonde man's back is to us. He's wearing skin tight clothes and he looks over his shoulder with a scowl. We transition to a dark room. We see a hooded figure in all black blow out smoke that spells out 
Zimbabwe, and he says the prophecy. Finally, Wait, what what prophecy? Oh, uh, we'll get to that. <laughs> uh, and finally, we arrive at an outdoor area surrounded by crudely constructed fences with barbed wires, spikes, anything dangerous that could be found. Armed men march around an old man sitting on a chair with white curly perm who waves his hand half asleep, speaking purely in gibberish. The men around him nod and begin to mobilize. <laughs> Casanova Brigadoon takes charge of the situation by gathering the players and assessing their skills. He explains he's a master of showing up in strange locations and moving on. A powerful mix of personalities, they decide the Spanish priest wielding a magical flaming sword that slices through stone like butter is probably okay to be their leader. Thus, Brigadoon's brigade was formed. Now that you've had some experience with Cartoon Action Hour, uh, everybody make themselves a quality that makes sense in this team. And that's a quality we would have gained while we've been in this post-apocalyptic world. Uh, it, it can be. Uh, just kind of like how you would fit into Brigadoon's Brigade. Oh, okay. I'm the horn blower. <laughs> I blow the horn. <laughs> um... You can you can add that. I, that's what it, oh, that is. Uh, that's already a quality. Oh, that's your quality. signature. Yeah, that's your signature yeah. quality. <laughs> ditch digger. I've learned how to dig ditches. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I'm gonna bust hole or von filthy hole. Uh, yeah. His, uh, his eyes narrow from <laughs> across the multiverse. I'm, I'm gonna put a uh, can breathe in harsh environments. Okay. Nice. Um, I would say Cameron Steele is probably probably experimenting with with chemistry in this uh, post post apocalyptic world to um, you know reasons. Don't ask questions. Yeah. So just like yeah. chemistry, science is important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense, and it really can be like it can be something super simple too. You know, like. Likes definitely not cooking math. math. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, definitely, cool. not. definitely not cooking yeah. math is the quality. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is the quality. Definitely not cooking math. I love it. So I came up with a quality called the power of friendship, which yes. is uh, Gizmo is adept at uh, getting everyone to chill out, and focus on the goal, and stay together in times of hardship. Beautiful. Okay, so those are our new qualities for the group. Creepily watching you from behind a boulder, a man in a black hood with jeans asks, are you the ones from the prophecy? Gobby Jack just, uh, what, what, what prophecy? Hmm. Obviously. Rip is part of any prophecy. I'm that good. The prophecy. Is, is there a prophecy I should, should have been aware of? Did I miss I, a I, prophecy? Eh, I'm, uh, I wasn't, I, I wasn't aware of any sort of prophecy. Uh, um, uh, I'm the thinker. Uh, I don't know anything about a prophecy. Yes, well. Huh? He then begins to explain that there are three warring mob bosses while stating that the true mob boss has gone into hiding because he blames himself for the end of the world. The three warring mob bosses, of course, are Don Giuseppe Alamancha, Macfash. 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 Man, I keep forgetting like what his first name is supposed to be. Uh, oh, Seamus. Seamus McFash. Seamus McFash. Yeah. Uh, and the final one is Fozzie Fosborn. The true mob boss that has gone into hiding is known as Agent Molokov, uh, who was a Russian spy. And you see these different mob bosses are all uh, mob bosses of respective heritage. So Don Giuseppe Alamancha is, of course, the Italian mob boss. Um, Seamus McFaish is, of course, the Irish mob boss, and Fozzie Fosborn is the uh, English mob boss. Uh, this hooded figure uh, here introduces himself as Logan Black, and while he himself uh, is a secret mob boss for uh, Zimbabwe, uh, he does not participate in the Great War of Mob Bosses. <clears throat> So the he goes he on. Looks to familiar. <laughs> yeah, he looks suspiciously like Nate. Uh, the <laughs> uh, 
So with the uh, the true mob boss, Molokov, uh, with his incredible powers, he summoned the meteor that wiped, he summoned a meteor to wipe out the rest of the mob bosses. Uh, but instead he managed to simply destroy most of the world while each of the mob bosses survived through their own special powers. And the power he unleashed sent psychic radiation across the globe, as well as resurrecting Fozzie and forcing Seamus's grandson to grow from an infant into an adult within a day. And his grandson, of course, being uh, the infamous Ned Waif, who will, uh, uh, who does not believe in his grandfather's cause of being the Irish mob boss and their power. Uh, so you'll all have your work cut out for you with this great mob boss war going on. Logan Black vanishes suddenly in a smoke cloud while a biker gang rides in your direction. Well, that was not the prophecy I was expecting. <laughs> Is there a prophecy I should know about? Let's go. Let's go. Raw. <laughs> Gobby Jack just feeds right off a of river. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Let's go. So, so Ripper gets pumped up. He's ready to, to, to throw down with the bikers. That in turn gets Gobby Jack pumped up yeah. to fight these bikers. Uh, Gizmo is incredibly confused, questioning why, what prophecy, why there's a prophecy, what, and just kind of looking around. And that's how this segment ends. Welcome to Deacons and Dragons. <laughs>